My name is Adora Speedhawk, and I'm here with my mom, Joy Speedhawk, for an ambush interview. Well, we planned this, so we can't oh, call this sure. ambush. And my, my name is Joy Speedhawk. <laughs> I'm here to ambush my daughter, Adora. What? <laughs> that was a fake voice, but. Alrighty, today we were listening to the radio about parent and the complications of parent child relationships. That's very timely. You remember we were just arguing before that? No, program? you weren't arguing me, you were arguing with Adriana. Right. So. What did you think of that, uh, talking about allowance, and what's your opinion about family monetary things, like how much you I think that's them? very interesting. The daughter is uh, 14 years old, the mother is uh, some expert, a financial expert, and she gives her daughter, who's 14 years old, $14 a week. And her 6-year-old son, $6, and her 10-year-old daughter, $10. And so the background is they live in New York. The daughter is saying that uh, $5 a week, uh, what well, she has to save... Oh, how does she, the ice cream topic comes about? Uh, she said that she only used to get like one dollar a week or something. Oh, right. And that right. she would have to save up for five weeks before she could buy ice cream. Oh, one week could buy ice cream. Oh, you have a little hair. Just yeah. Just, yeah, got it. Okay. Sorry, that was so, disgusting. <laughs> I think that's a pretty interesting approach to raise kids to have responsibilities and also experience to spend money. Unless you have tried to spend money and to learn what is worthwhile, what is good spending, what is not so good of spending. You can teach them all you want, At however the same you time can though, practice. What, yeah. what are your feelings about allowance and giving kids that money? Well, I think it is a good idea for many families, but may not be a good idea for some other families. For us, because I trust you guys, you guys are very responsible and also very conscientious about the value of money. And I can simply give you some money to say, hey, do you want to go with your sister to spend some money to buy some drink or to buy some items that you need? And i absolutely confident you will spend that money wisely. So I don't have to do this weekly thing or monthly thing. I can simply just go give you guys money as needed. So you feel that lack of regulation shows a increase of trust? In our household, uh, in terms of my trust in you and Adriana, yes. When you were little, what was your monetary situation? Did you get front money from your parents? Are you when kidding was, me? When was the age when you started having money of your own? When I started working? Oh, well, actually, when I uh, went to college, I lived in a different city, and Ye Popo, you know, my mom and dad had to give me money in order to buy a ticket to get meal plan in college and also have to buy clothes and the necessities, that type of thing. So I started having money when I went to college. And how do you feel that the age at which you started having your own money affected your choice about money later on? Do you think that you are better with money today or worse with money today? Would you have appreciated if you'd gotten money earlier? I think it won't make much difference. The reason is I grew up in China in, in 60s, 70s, 80s. There weren't many things I could have bought anyway, even I had money. And everybody were poor and uh, I just understand from a very young age, money is something very scarce and also merchandise is very, very scarce. And I never really had desire wanting things because when I went to a store, there's nothing there to to buy so I didn't really have this kind of habit of wanting things and knowing what is need or what is want it just uh, I take whatever is given to me okay changing topics here snail mail versus email pros and cons well email definitely is fast and uh, easier you don't have to put it in the envelope you don't have to put a stamp and go to the post office or put it in the mail so the convenience part definitely email however the personal sentiment that goes to a regular snail mail, if it's a personal letter, not just business letter. And um, But nowadays, it's so hard to find time just sit down and write somebody a letter because, one, even you send a letter to somebody, not very likely they're going to send you a personal letter. They probably email you if you even get an email. Well, this is actually a topic that's kind of near and dear to my heart, and for people who have read my blog, you'll know that I like snail mail for a variety of reasons. One is that 
it gives me kind of time to sit down and think and for me email kind of tells me hurry up get this done you can type this faster they sign you out email which almost drives the speed and then the second thing is how many spelling and writing errors have you seen in a handwritten letter as opposed to an email well I guess people take their time when they write to you in handwriting you don't see as many mistakes in email although Spell check is kind of automatic built in, so you, you can use that. That's true, but one of the things is, I think, with email, everything's fast about email. Some people don't even bother to spell check, even mm -hmm. though it's there. Correct. Whereas with writing, you're taking a long time anyway, a few extra minutes to check your grammar. Yes, yes. I remember months. probably 10 or 15 years ago, I used to receive letters from my friends that have always remember that time fondly because you have this anticipation you don't just get a personal letter next day if you write a letter you wait for weeks mm -hmm. and on end but that during that time your heart is well that's the thing it builds with patience yeah. you're anticipating it and i think watching you you're saying you're complaining if someone hasn't sent if you haven't received someone's email and it's been maybe a day two days and so i think that with email and this digital culture and this instant gratification we lose some of the patience perhaps yes, absolutely i completely agree with you do you mind just closing sure, the door a tiny bit yes um we have really become impatient and i find myself become impatient and the, the expectation has changed and if you send out the email you basically expect to receive a reply you know in few hours sometimes in a few minutes i mean it depends on the na nature mm -hmm. of the email yeah. if something that you're working on and you need instant feedback mm -hmm. and usually people know that and then reply to you but i am not a saint i don't always reply to people's email when i oh, should believe me neither do i and Actually, that's one of the things about letters, for me anyway, I, I'm not sure about other people, but when I receive a letter, I think this person spent a long time writing it out to me, I better write back to them, which pressures me just a little bit. Now, the, and the reason I brought this up was that it seems like there's a lot of nostalgia for letters and letter writing. If you think about like these movies. Oh yes, oh yeah, letters, letters to, to Julia, letters John. to jo Dear yeah. John. Uh -huh. Oh gosh, it's just been, I mean, people are crazy about yeah, letters. Uh, what is it, dear email to because Julia? and that's the thing i was reading this really interesting article online about this all this nostalgia and it's just not as romantic having text messages to juliet correct emails to juliet because there's something romantic about opening up an envelope and reading a letter that you can't get on yeah because people put so much effort and care into creating this letter and uh, you receive that signal through the letter and through the message in the letter. Yeah, and it's kind of like phone calls. If you think about important decisions being made or important news being received, I mean, it's much easier to imagine someone picking up the phone and hearing that the world is a nuclear war or receiving mm -hmm. a letter and reading it and being all distressed than receiving a text message or an email. There's just something about email that hasn't gained that gravity maybe mm -hmm. quite yet. It's very interesting. What else is fascinating you recently, this couple of days? Weather. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, well, how do you think that what's outside is affecting inside life here? Well, if it's sunny outside, you automatically feel cheerful and uplifted and you want to do something exciting. And then when you get up and look at the gloomy weather, somehow your heart just sank. It's like, oh, it's another gloomy day, and I can't go out, I cannot enjoy the sun. And then automatically you think, oh, can I enjoy the day? It, it, it's silly. You try not to feel that way, but somehow the weather has a, a such emotional connection with our daily lives. Definitely. It definitely affects it. So do you think we should move to a sunnier place? No. Definitely not. Well, getting vitamin D is much easier. I don't like getting tanned or burnt. What's going on with this fair skin? No, no, no. It's not about that. I I just, I hear so much about melanoma and skin cancer and how bad tanning beds are for you. Well, I'll tell you this. If you don't I mean, have enough vitamin D, you would get cancer, you would get sick or more often. However, viewers, probably this enough rent from Joyce and Adora.
Thank you very much for watching. You, she just ambush ended this, see? Yes. If you like to watch this episode, email us. <laughs>